um, we'll get going. Oh, nice. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to see all these faces. Perfect. Um, first off, I am going to ask all of you to turn your cameras on, if you would, please. Um, I know oftentimes you may not have your cameras on, but we're gonna ask that we can see your guys' smiling faces. So welcome to the first Farms Leadership Tehama and North State Field Day. Um, if you don't know me yet, I know some of you haven't met me in person. I'm Dana Baker, I am your Farms Coordinator. And um, we are going to start the year with these Zoom virtual field days, and we have high hopes that we're going to get to be in person one day. Um, this is Abigail. If you haven't met her either, she's my daughter. She's the littlest of the three that I have. She's almost a year old. She'll be a year old next week. Um, so she'll be joining us. And I want to introduce our host today. And um, we have Jody and Frankie with us, and they are from Bell Campo. Um, and Jody is the farm business manager, and she has been really wonderful helping get this together. And um, her and Frankie have been hard at work to put together a really fun day for you guys. Um, so I'm going to let Jody kind of take it from here and. Um, introduce Frankie and kind of let them tell a little bit about themselves and some history on Bel Campo. And then we're gonna actually talk to each of you that are joining us from either your classroom or your home or wherever you may be. Um, so yeah, we're gonna kind of take a little time to get started this time and um, go from there. So, all right, Jody, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Dana. Hi guys, this I'm Jody. I'm the farm business manager and I worked at the farm for a little over two and a half years and I kind of handle most of the administrative things that kind of happen and come through the farm, which we do a lot. Um, this is Frankie. She is our hospitality coordinator extraordinaire. This chick can do anything, <laughs> trust me. And I ask a lot of her and she always comes through 100%. So she's going to, she's the one who made the video that you'll be seeing today. So, um, I think what we wanted to start with was having you kind of go around the room. We would love to hear who you are, where you're from, and what you might be interested in in ag someday. So the boldest person should start. Who's ready? I'll start. <laughs> Perfect. Hi guys, I'm Frankie. I am the hospitality coordinator here at the Belcampo Farm, and I also work in our organic produce garden and work farmers markets. I am from Orange County in Southern California. I graduated college from the University of San Francisco in 2018. I studied environmental science. So when I was in high school, I thought I would go into something related to, you know, sustainability or climate science. And after I worked in restaurants all throughout college. And after college, I got a job at Belcampo's restaurant. Belcampo actually has restaurants in Los Angeles and the Bay Area. So I was a waitress at Belcampo's restaurant, um, had a chance to come up and visit the farm, totally fell in love with it. And I started as an intern here. I was supposed to be here last year from um, late summer into, until October. And I worked really hard in my, in my internship and you know, showed up with a good attitude every day and worked really, really hard. And I got hired full time here at the farm. So I've been here for about a year now. And like I said, I do uh, most of the farm hospitality. So when people come to visit, I'll give them a farm tour or I do. And then I also work our farmer's markets and work in the produce garden. Yeah, that's my spiel. Okay, who's next? Hello, my name is Allison Menner. I'm a senior at Orland High School. And I'm really excited for all the ag stuff that we can do. Um, I'm thinking about I'm majoring in animal biology in college to get my bachelor's, yeah. Awesome. Madison. Hi, I'm Madison Pearson and I'm from Maxwell, California. And the reason why I think I wanna go into an ag field is because I've always grown up on the farm and it's just something I'm interested in.
Wonderful. Mackenzie. My name is Mackenzie Huntley. I'm from Corning and I'm just excited to learn more about ag and how it changes our lives and affects us. Perfect. Amber. Hi, I'm Amber Charter. I'm the ag teacher at Maxwell High School. Perfect. Stevie? Hi, I'm Stevie Taylor. I'm a junior at Corning High School. Um, I love everything about ag. AJ. Hi, I'm AJ Stafford. I'm a junior at Corning High School, and I want to be a biologist, which is related to ag. Awesome. Bella. Hi, I'm Bella. Um, I'm originally from Orange County. So, <laughs> and um, I live in Sunny for now, and I just like ag because I've never had an experience before when I lived in. Cool. Miss Cannon. You're muted. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to Matt. Hi, I'm Matthew Mintz and I'm a junior at Corning High School and I want to major in agribusiness. Cool. All right, Lasmo, we're going to have you guys go around the room. Who's first? I'm Elena. I'm a freshman at Los Munoz High School and what I like about ag science is learning about all the different types of plants and soil and anything related to agriculture. Uh, I'm Lee Bagshaw. I just, I don't know, I just signed up just to see what I could learn more about agriculture and that stuff. I'm Luke Canton Wine, and I signed up for ag or for this because I wanted to learn more about ag and it seems cool. <laughs> I'm Diana Valencia, and I wanted to learn more from agri-science. Awesome. All right, Aiden, you're up. All right, Aiden, you're up. Hi, I'm Aiden Moyer. From, I'm a senior at Red Bull High School, and I want to major in uh, ag business so I can take over my parents' cattle business and help it grow. Perfect. Tristan. Hi, I'm Tristan. I'm a sophomore at Orland High School, and I signed up for farms to learn more about agribusiness, and I don't really know what I want to do, but I might want to do something in ag. Good. You're in the right place then. All right, Audrey. Hi, I'm Audrey Wills. I'm from Maxwell, and I'm a sophomore, and um, I've just always been interested in ag, and that's why. Cool. All right, Zane, how about you? Zane, you're muted. Oh. Zane, can you turn your mute off and tell us? Hi, I'm Hannah, and oh. I go to Orland, and I wanted to be in this because I want to learn more about agricultural careers so I can learn what I want to do. Perfect. Sorry, Hannah. All right, so obviously, perfect example. I don't know your names with your faces yet, so make sure that your name is <laughs> the right name <laughs> on your Zoom screen, please. Uh, great. Samantha? Hi, my name is Samantha. 
And what are you here for? What do you want to learn more about? I want to learn more about agriculture business. Okay, cool. All right, who else is here? Uh, Angel, do you have, can you turn your camera on? Angel, you want to tell us, introduce yourself? I'm Angel. I want to be, I uh, signed up for this because I wanted to do agricultural engineering when I go, uh, so I can do construction when I'm older. Awesome. Well, we're going to get to see lots of opportunities that are um, engineering based throughout the year. So that's great. Uh, Christina Lozano, how about you? You want to talk to us about where you're from and what you're interested in? No, Christina? All right, did everybody get a turn? Anybody go ahead and speak up if I didn't hit it. You. Hi, so I found the, we use Google Meet at school, so I haven't figured out Zoom yet. <laughs> So uh, we have connectivity issues all over our district. And so when the kids keep their cameras off, they can stream the sound better, but they, they're trying to turn them on. And I know Christina's having issues connecting. So Okay. As long as she can hear, we're good. <laughs> yeah, I think she can. Yeah, I, I'm talking to him. So I'm Anna Cannon and I'm an ag teacher and FFA advisor at Orland High School. And uh, my son has an amazing job because of the farms program. So I'm a huge supporter. <laughs> well, thank you, Ms. Cannon. All right. Well, awesome. I'm so glad that you guys are all here again. Um, and you guys should have all received your kits yesterday or some of you got them this morning. Um, and yeah, and we'll be able to kind of, well, during the video, we'll see that. Um, oh, speaking of, um, I am gonna go ahead and share my screen here in just a second and get that video going. Uh, I know, Give be patient with me. Um, First one. Yes. Jot your questions down or put them in the chat bar so then we can answer all of your questions. Okay. Yes. As as you guys come up with things that you're like, hey, I wanted to know more about that, jot it down, yep, on a piece of paper or type it into the chat bar. At the very end, we will go back um, through and get do a question and answer session, um, as well as, you know love to just have some feedback if you just have some things that spark your interest or you want to know more about let's don't forget don't hesitate to use that chat bar so all right we're i'm going to share my screen and we're going to get the video going um so you guys can watch this if you pin my screen um then you'll be able to see the video the best and then if jody and frankie have anything that they comments during it or whatever um they can still talk through it and you guys will be able to see. But I'm sure most of you are fairly familiar with Zoom. So if you go up to the, you click on, hold your cursor over my screen and the little dots come up, you can hit that and then you can pin my screen and it'll keep um, this, the, like your main screen. So. Go ahead and turn your volumes up. There's good um, speakers and everything during this. So let's get going. We can't hear the video. Okay, maybe I need to leave my screen. Thank you for saying that. Let's give me a thumbs up if you can hear it. 
seconds a little too. Dana, oh, can you hear it? No. I, I can't hear it. Dana, when you share the screen on the bottom left, it should say like include video or include audio. So go back to share. And on the bottom share. left, it should yep, say yep. something. Yes, thank you. Yep. Okay, look at, look at all these things. See, it's a work in progress. I'm gonna be a pro at the end. Okay. Hi there. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is James Rickert. I'm the farm director here for Volcampo Farms. And uh, I'm here with our, the manager of our poultry operation. This is Manoli. Howdy. And uh, Manoli, and I, Manoli and I are going to talk a little bit about what we see here. And uh, we'll take you around the farm a little bit today and uh, show you what we're up to. So Manoli, what are we looking at here? We're looking at baby bronze turkeys. These guys here are only five days old. Okay. They were they were hatched last Wednesday. They were pla placed Thursday. They arrived on the farm Thursday. So they're in here and they're in their little brooder setup. Um, we are a pasture farm, so so these guys are inside for for now because they can't survive outside right now. Baby um, poultry. Uh, can't thermoregulate thermo uh, and have poor immune systems until about the time they're about three or four weeks old. So we keep them here under this brooder heater that keeps it in the, within the 90s so they're all comfortable. All right. Well, you guys ready for, for a trip? Let's go. Yes. All right, off to the layer. Also part of the farm. This is uh, all these tent platforms. These are what we use for our meat camp series. So we put tents on top of there, the Shasta house, and then we've got a big orchard and garden, and we grow a lot of vegetables, fruit and vegetables here. You know the red trailers up there? That's the destination. But I want to point out, if you look at all of the trailers that we have here. We basically started with the trailers over here and we've been towing them throughout this field. And so we call these our, you know, our egg tractors, but we basically are, are administering fertility to these fields and towing them all around. And so I'm just, we're delivering all of this great manure uh, right to this field. So this field is going to explode with production and growth. So that's one that thing that's really unique about Belcampo is that we, we integrate animals with crops. And it's very uh, a regenerative agricultural methods of integrating nutrients, animals, crops, and it's one big cycle here in the farm. And we, we try to put it all together and match where we put everything. And we have very strategic crop rotations. Um, and it's really important because we can really build soil health. It's pretty exciting. All right, we off to see the chickens, let's go. So we, uh, we raise a lot of vegetables for the, at the farm as well. And last year, I knew where I wanted to put the field for this year. So last year, we had all the birds parked out there. We let the trailer sit there a little extra long so I could get a lot of extra fertility. So when we put in our, you know, our corn, our squash, our pumpkins, our tomatoes, uh, we'll have a lot of organic fertilizer just waiting for all those plants. So that's uh, pretty exciting. All right, Manoli, we're going in this house. All right, yeah. Let's do it. Let's go these guys here. So, so this netting here is usually um, electrified, not not a high charge, but enough to keep the birds in and maybe some predators out. The charge box is over there. It's all solar powered. So, uh, so, so these are our player trailers, as uh, Dave pointed out. Here, here, here's the girl coming to greet us now. This is, a, this is a barred rock. So, so we have, um, as, you'll, as you'll see, uh, we have um, different breeds here of birds. The, the one by the drinker there, that's a red sex link over there. And 
As James uh, said, we, we pull our trailers uh, down the field. So, so everything is attached uh, to the trailers. We, uh, we have their water tanks here. Those the blue tubes there are their feeders, which is a Bill Campbell design, by the way. <laughs> you know, my team and I developed it, you know? And the nest boxes are inside the trailer. So, oh, there's a girl in there working right now to produce some eggs. She's working hard. So, as you can see, they're, uh, we're, we're full of eggs, brown eggs, you know, cream-colored eggs. Well, no, nah, it's, from, it's from the different species of, the different species, different breeds of birds uh, that we have. So these guys are doing pretty good. So there's some uh, two red sex links. There's the barred rock. We also have black sex links here as well. So as you can see, they're pretty, they're pretty friendly. I mean, they're, I mean, they're, uh, they're used to humans. They see us all the time. So, so they're like, hey, the humans are here. What's up? You got to steal our eggs again. <laughs> Which is um, totally different uh, than, uh, than the conventional setting. Because in the conventional setting, uh, they're, uh, they're scrunched into cages and stuff like that. And everything is automatic. The, the feed, the water, they have a conveyor belt that comes through and, and uh, collects eggs. So, so totally impersonal. And the birds can't go out and play. They, these, uh, these birds are, are outside, they run around, they dust bathe. Yes, if, uh, if the bird has a red earlobe, <laughs> see it like that. If they have a red earlobe like the, like this girl here does, and then the eggs will be brown, most likely. There's some exceptions. And uh, if the earlobe is white, the eggs will be white as well. But again, there's exceptions to, to, to the rule as well. But the majority, it, it rings true. Smile. You're on Instagram. <laughs> there you go, one. Nice. <laughs> it was it was chicken me out. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, and that's a, uh, and that's a, uh, and again, that's a, that's a red sex link. This, uh, this here is a, is a true breed. Uh, it's a heritage breed, Bard Rock. The, the sex links are, are a hybrid. They're, they're not a true breed because they don't breed true. So, uh, so, so, so essentially, uh, it was, I think, I think their daddies are a red, are a Rhode Island red. And their and their mothers. Oh, okay, 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 okay. She's like, I had enough. I had no. enough. So I don't need to hear about the genetic makeup of my cousin over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the female line could be different things: Delaware, uh, white, uh, white Rhode Island red. It, it differs, but uh, but the advantage uh, these have uh, against the Ro uh, the bars or Rhode Island red. She's she's done too. <laughs> Is a, is a hybrid vigor. So, so the sex links will produce more eggs in the year than, than a barred rock will. And lay there. All right, Sally. And, uh, and another difference uh, between our birds and conventional is that, is that, we'll, is that we'll, we'll keep our birds uh, for, for two um, production cycles. Conventional only keeps them for, for one, mainly mainly because it's not economical for for them. But uh, but we're you know, you know we're we're about animal welfare, so, so we hold them on uh, a year uh, a production cycle longer. Hi, babies. Hi everyone, my name is Leah. I'm the swine manager here at Belcampo. Um, I've been here for almost two years. I'd say my favorite part of my job is piglets. <laughs> um, and how I got this job. I actually started working um, at the restaurants in Oakland. I helped open up that location and through that I met James and Anya. Uh, they got me up for a meat camp and when I came home they offered me a job and I came up a few months later. That's how I got here. A uh, typical day, uh, we have a brief morning meeting, and then first thing is feeding all of the animals, making sure everybody has water and bedding. Um, so 
we call that chores and checks. Um, and then once everybody has been checked, um, everybody has feed, then we do all kinds of random things. Like today I'm doing a water upgrade in my hoop. I have Dusty here helping me out with that. And yeah, it could be anything from that. Feeding animals, uh, moving pigs happens almost daily. Uh, vaccinating, things like that happen on about a monthly basis. Uh, sonograms, yeah, all kinds of random stuff. Um, my advice to high school kids would be try it. Um, contact the farm, contact your neighbor and get your hands dirty. Start working with some animals and give it a try. See if you like it. So my name is Dustin and I'm from Wairika, California. Um, to, my brother-in-law got me into this job and uh, if you're really looking to get into this job, 4-H is one way of going while you're in school. Also another is making friends with people who have farms. Hi, my name is Angelique and I work here at Bell Campbell Farms in this fine department. I am 20 years old. I am uh, forklift certified, if you can see. And um, how to get forklift certified? Um, you could take a test online. You watch like uh, videos, and, and um, then you take a test, become certified. And my favorite part about this job is uh, the piglets. They're the cutest. Everybody. We're about to move a group of sows, which means pregnant moms, over to a new group. So come join us. Hi, my name is Daniela Granados. I'm from Mexico. I'm the assistant manager of swine department. And my favorite part is the farrowing area. That is where the sows get birth to the piglets. And we also have some opportunities here for uh, high school students to kind of shadow us and get an idea of what it's like to work on a farm. Uh, so basically, you come, wake up early in the morning, you come with us, do chores, you know, maybe move a few animals around, ask a bunch of questions and kind of see what it's like to really work on a farm. Hi, my name is Luis Budino. I take, take care of the lambs. Sheep, cattle, uh, field defenses, rows, haying, anything in this farm. So I'm pretty happy by my job. For all uh, operational agricultural things that happen at Bell Camper. Cool. How do you get started in just farming in general? Uh, I started working on a cattle ranch uh, when I was 14 or 15 years old. Um, just kind of fell in love with it. Uh, loved the, the lifestyle, the things that we got to do. Um, I liked the reward of um, you know working hard for something that that you get to create and then and then see the product of later. Um, and I really enjoyed how you know our 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 constructive work and its interaction with the natural environment. Yeah, I, I liked that intersection. I thought it was just cool and. I didn't really understand it at the time. I, I probably still don't, but but uh, I thought it was really neat and um, kind of captivating. Yeah, so I I I, uh, I continued working on cattle ranches, uh, you know, through high school and, and then into college. And I studied uh, agricultural business uh, in college. And uh, Bill Campbell hired me just out of college, and I've been here ever since. Nice. Yeah. So, what's your favorite part about the whole process? Uh, you know, honestly, actually, the people is my favorite part. Um, in agriculture, you know, for some reason, we attract uh, the industry, I think, as a whole, but certainly at Del Campo, uh, we attract people with a lot of passion, um, more so than 
in other industries, I feel. Um, you know, it, it's, it's definitely, I, I could speculate as to why, um, but, uh, but for one reason or another, I think the industry as a whole and definitely about Campbell, we attract a lot of people with just a ton of passion and drive for what we do. Uh, we share this like uh, commonality that is our interest in kind of what I explained, kind of our, our, our hard work with uh, the natural environment and, and, and all the challenges that come along with it. Uh, so kind of that bond that we have um, as a team is, is pretty fun. Um, and then it gets really colorful with different personalities and, and uh, figuring out how to all work as a team. And um, that's the most enjoyable part. I've also, it's also the most fulfilling to, um, you know, see how, uh, you know, figure out ways to get teams to be more productive. Kind of the one plus one equals three thing um, is it's super entertaining and kind of gets me out of bed in the morning. Hi, I'm Jody. I'm the farm office or business manager. So I handle anything administratively that the farm needs me to handle. Uh, the best part about my job is that I work with amazing people who are really committed um, to doing their jobs to the best of their ability. Favorite thing about working at a farm is the fact that it's casual, even though we're still very professional. Um, I don't have to feel like I'm living in the corporate world. So my advice to you is maybe animals aren't your thing, but there's a lot of a wide variety of positions at a farm. So consider ag and, and look deep into farm operations for all the different positions that they may offer. And you'll find one that fits you. All right, so here's a little tiny baby spaghetti squash. This is what they look like when they first begin growing. And then in here, we have a mature squash. This guy's ready to be harvested. You can tell because it's this deep yellow color. And when I push my fingernail into it, it doesn't leave a mark. That's how you know when winter squash are ready to be harvested. Okay, we're in our event barn kitchen. This is where our chefs prepare meals for meat camps or any on-farm events we have. I'm gonna show you guys how to cook two things. You're either gonna get two summer squash like this, zucchini, or this thing. This is a winter squash. It's called a spaghetti squash. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys how to make a classic red meat sauce and then how to bake both of these squashes so you can make them for your families. So I'll start with the meat sauce. You guys are gonna either get ground pork or ground beef. It's gonna look like that. You have to defrost it first before you cook it. Um, I start with a little bit of olive oil in a pan like this. Instead of pouring out of the whole jug or the bottle, I like to start with it in a bowl just so you can control how much comes out. So I do a little bit, like a, probably like a tablespoon. And then I'm gonna start the oven. So I have our oven going. And then the first thing I'm gonna add is gonna be some fresh garlic. You can also add onion if you want to add onion. So here's a one, one clove of garlic I think is good for one pound of ground beef. And then to chop the garlic, a trick I have is I grab a fork first. I grab a fork and then if you just push down on the garlic, It'll kind of break it up for you a little bit before you chop it. And then grab a knife. Okay, there we go. And then just chop little pieces. But be careful of your fingers. A trick I have is I kind of curl my fingers backwards. So if the knife hits you, it's gonna hit your knuckles instead of the tips of your fingers. So just slowly. And then you can kind of shift them this way and then go back the other way with the knife and cut it, cut it to smaller pieces. It doesn't have to be perfect at all because you're gonna throw it in with the beef and the rest of the sauce. And then normally I'll hit it one more time with the fork just to kind of crush it up a little bit more, but you don't have to do that. It's just a little trick I have. All right, so then grab this and then you can throw it into your hot oil. Let it cook for a little bit. 
So as we're letting the garlic warm up, we can cut our squash. So if you have a spaghetti squash, it will come pre-cut. We're gonna cut it for you guys because the shell is a little bit harder. So. If you guys recreate this recipe and do it without the squash that we give you, be careful because it's really hard to cut winter squash. So when you open it up, it kind of looks like a pumpkin with similar seeds. I just take a knife or a fork and scrape the seeds out. You can, you can roast the seeds like you would pumpkin seeds. They're super tasty. If you want, you just strain some of the pulp with the seeds. They taste super similar. So you just kind of... with a spoon and like I said it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't matter if there's like there's some still there's still some pulp in there all right this one all righty there we go all right so those are prepped try to get as much of the seed and the pulp out as possible all right, so I'm gonna check on our garlic. It's a little bit brown, as you can see, so I'm gonna stir it a little bit. And I'm gonna add our whole pound of the ground beef. I like to try to put it in an, like an even layer to start until it browns. So I'll let that cook like that for a few minutes. And as I do that, I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil onto our spaghetti squash. Again, I'm gonna do it out of a bowl instead of the jug, just so I have a little bit of control over the amount. And I like to just kinda of like that. And then you can go back and rub it in more with your fingers. If you put too much olive oil, the squash will get a little bit of, like, it will get a little mushy. So I would do like a tablespoon of olive oil. And then just a little bit of salt and pepper. A trick that I have for the salt is to salt from higher up. Because if you salt too close, you might have it too concentrated on a specific part of the squash. So if you start higher up, you get a more even spread. And then just a little bit of pepper. All right. Okay, now I'm gonna put these guys in the oven. I just grabbed a piece of foil and then put them on a small baking sheet, a little cookie sheet, and have the oven set to 400 degrees. So, that was good. Put the sky on here, and I'm gonna put them in the oven on the bottom shelf here. And I let them bake between 30 and 40 minutes, depending on the size. So I would set a timer for around 30 minutes and check on them, and then give them another five, 10 minutes, depending on if they look done or not. Now I'm giving our sauce a little bit of a stir. I want all of the meat to be nice and brown. I'm gonna just even it out. And then I'll let that cook for a little bit longer. Right. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to this. And like I said, you can add onions, you can add other herbs. Um, you can add, in your kit, there's gonna be an Italian seasoning. It's gonna have basil, oregano, um, fresh thyme. You can add some of that to it, a little bit, depending if you like herbs, like that. Right, and I'll let that cook a little bit longer. And I'll show you how to prep these summer squash. These guys are a little bit easier than the spaghetti squash because they're not as hard. So all you have to do is cut them straight in half. Like that, easy. And then just hollow them out. You can either use a spoon or you can just cut them out with a knife. So you take your spoon and then just kind of follow underneath where you cut with the knife and it should come right out. Doesn't have to be perfect. There you go, little, uh, little boats. <laughs> yeah. Back to our sauce, making sure it's all cooked through. You can add a little bit of pepper if you want to. 
Okay, now my ground beef is all browned. You can see it's all cooked through, no more pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some red sauce, just regular marinara sauce, nothing too fancy. So you can start, just kind of pour it in and stir as you go. You don't have to do the whole jar, you can adjust it based on how much sauce you want, how meaty you want it. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna use the whole jar because I like tomato sauce. <laughs> it smells so good. Okay, so this is my spaghetti squash after I took it out of the oven. It was in the oven at 400 for about 45 minutes. So you let it cool first. It's really hard to do when it's super hot. So I'd let it cool for like 15, 20 minutes. All you do is take a fork and go like this and see, look at that. It turns into like almost a noodle-like consistency. Stringy. There we go. Take a fork to both sides and carve it out. That. And then the other side. Same thing. Okay, so then I'm gonna put a little bit you can do this family style in a big bowl or you can do it in a little bowl. I'm gonna put a little bit in a bowl. Look at that, it looks just like spaghetti. And then I'm gonna ladle a little bit of our sauce on top of it. Meat sauce. Like voila, like that. You can mix it up or you can just leave it straight on top. And then all I'm gonna do is add a little bit of Parmesan cheese on the top. I like cheese, so I'm gonna put a lot. And then you can add other things like you can do like some parsley, fresh basil, anything as a little topper. And there you have spaghetti squash. Okay, while those are, while those are baking, I'm gonna show you guys another way to make zoodles, which are zucchini noodles. You take a whole zucchini and a peeler, and all you have to do is peel along the squash, and you're gonna get long noodles like this. You don't have to um, boil them. Like you would regular pasta. They'll cook when you put them in your sauce and they're super thin. So they taste almost like a pasta. Sometimes I'll even cut mine in half if you want to have thinner noodles. You can cut them in half too if you want like a more of a spaghetti type noodle. But these ones, I like the thick ones too because they're like lasagna or a fettuccine. So once you do this, and you have your zucchini ribbons. You can do this with any kind of peeler too. All right, so I think I have enough noodles, here we go. So I'm just gonna put these straight into my sauce. Kind of mix it up. I'm gonna grab my wooden spoon. Kind of mix it up. And these guys will cook a little bit in the sauce. And it turns into a super healthy dish. Super low carb. You can obviously add more noodles to it, but yeah, it turns into zoodles. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> okay, picture this little squash boat right here with some fresh tomatoes, a fresh roll, and a green salad. Your tummies will be happy and your family will love you forever. <laughs> Good job, nice job, Jody and Frankie. Thanks. Guys, um, so those of you, how about a uh, clap? Do you guys have to use your reactions? Give them a round of applause, thumbs up. <laughs> uh, good job, yeah, there you go, Allison. <laughs> um, perfect, well, um, so we're gonna move into questions and answers if we've got some questions um, from anybody. And I 
kind of want to start out by asking if, um, Jody and Frankie, do you know how, can you say, talk a little bit, we saw the different species of animals, um, but Belcampro primarily focuses on, is it on meat sales or do you guys sell the animals whole? Um, kind of curious about that. And then we can see who else has some um, questions. I'm going to take that question if you want that one. Okay, I, I, I got it. So on this ranch here, we have pigs, uh, poultry, so ducks, geese, turkeys, chickens, and then our layer hens, which lay eggs. And we have cattle and lambs and sheep. So we um, are a vertically integrated uh, company, which means we own our own farm and we have our own processing or butchery in Wairika, which is 20 minutes away. So we send our animals there and they're, um, it's still Bill Campo, our animals get processed. Um, and then we send meat down to our restaurants, which are located in Los Angeles or the Bay Area. And then we also have um, an outlet for local retail sales here. So Orchard Nutrition in Reading carries our meat, if you guys are familiar with that. And, um, and I also work the farmer's markets where we have an opportunity to sell our meat and eggs. Wonderful. All right. Anybody else who has questions, just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask away. Anybody? I saw a question on the chat about predators and how we control them. Oh. One of the ways, one of the things we do for our birds, especially is, um, and for our sheep, is we use guard dogs. We have um, Anatolian shepherds and Great Pyrenees dogs that live with our sheep herds. They keep our lambs safe at night and we build sleeping pens for them. So then they sleep in one protected area and the dogs, you know, hopefully ward off any threats. Um, we, use, we do something similar to, for the birds. Sometimes we will take some of our guard dogs and position them near where the birds are pastured. So then they can also um, hopefully ward off any threats. So that's one way that we do that. Awesome. Any other questions? All right. So if we don't have any questions, I'm going to ask of you guys, um, as you guys are preparing your zoodles or your zucchini boat dishes, I want you guys to send me pictures. So if you send me a picture of you using your kit during, um, while you're either preparing it, have somebody take some pictures of you cooking with it, show me a picture of you with your finished product, you're gonna get a special treat from me in your next kit. Um, so I wanna see everybody utilizing their things. You've got the peelers, so you guys can easily make your zoodles out of your zucchini. And um, I can't wait to give that a try for my family. I honestly have not done zoodles before, so I think my kids will really love it. Um, yeah, so. Any other last minute questions, comments, anything um, before we tell Jody and Frankie goodbye? You have done an excellent job. We have thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, we actually, I have a really great YouTube video. We had a YouTuber here recording on the farm. I'll send you guys the link if you're interested to see more footage of the ranch. And um, there's more um, footage of our cattle there. We don't have too many cows on this immediate ranch here right now. So we did, I didn't include too many cows in the video, but if you want to learn more about our beef and just Belcampo in general, I'll shoot you over that, that link. Yes, do that. That would be wonderful. And we can get that to the students. Um, Oh, yeah, there's, and I know Belcambo, you have, you guys have social media. I'm sure you have uh, Instagram and so, I don't know if you want to type that into the chat box, maybe your Instagram and stuff, then the kids can follow along. You guys can follow them um, and see what they're up to. And again, they're not far from us. Um, they're up in Gazelle, which is just up off I-5. So um, if you have an interest in taking a trip up there, I 
I'm sure they would be happy to have some of you up to wander around and check out the place. So let me know if you have that, inter that interest and we can connect you um, to Jody or Frankie and get a little uh, tour up there or like um, the one gal had said, if you want to do a shadow, come up, get up early, go up there and actually see what it is to work on a farm. Um, I, they have lots of opportunities for that and have extended that invitation to us. So uh, Jody and Frankie, thank you so much for doing this, for putting in the time and effort for our students and for um, supporting them and giving them the wonderful ground pork and beef and zucchini to um, share with their families and try their first hand. Some of them um, probably have never cooked, so this is good. Their parents might be a little fearful, but <laughs> uh, it should be good. So anyhow, good. thank you guys. It was wonderful to see all of you. Yeah, thank you guys. You guys, my card is on your pocket. If you guys have any questions, I just graduated college in 2018. So if you guys have any questions about that experience or um, anything about ag in general, shoot me an email and I, I'll return to you. I'll return. Yeah, I'll show you guys an email back. Any questions? <laughs> all right. Awesome. Well, thank you all. We will um, see you guys here in probably about a month for the rest of you farm students. We'll have another field day. Thank you, Jody and Frankie and Bell Campo. Yeah.